Welcome to r slash Petty Revenge, where we share stories of small victories over those who have wronged you. And today we have four interesting stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and here we go. The first story, the salesman didn't want to move his car, so he didn't get to the meeting. The second story, a man parked his car in the wrong place and got revenge. The third story, the boss will see what my colleague is doing during working hours. The fourth story, Neighbor stole my things, so I will take her wedding dress. The first story is, steal my parking space and ignore me? Miss your meeting. The office park that my office is situated in is pretty limited parking. Each office suite has a handful of spaces and they're clearly labeled. Typically, each office suite has a couple of spaces right outside the door and then another few spaces in the middle of the car park. If you use all your parking spaces, you have to park half a mile away on the main road and walk back, so it pays to get in early enough to grab a space. There's enough space behind the spaces in front of the offices to park a car without blocking the car park if you park sideways behind two cars, i.e. blocking two cars in, but not stopping other cars driving around, which is what the postman, delivery drivers, etc. do. Some offices use this knowledge to provide an extra parking space, as you're just blocking in your coworkers' cars, and they can easily get you to move if they need to get out. My office is in the corner of the office park. We have a space next to the wall and the space next to that. The next couple of spaces are obviously allocated to the office next door. I usually get in early enough to grab the space next to the wall. Now, the office next door is the regional HQ for a small company, and they often have people from other offices visiting. As they're not familiar with the parking arrangements, it isn't unusual for us to find that one of their visitors has taken one of our spaces. In that case, we'd just knock on their office door and ask the owner of the car to come out and move it. It happens so often that the landlord put a sign on the door of their office to remind visitors they have to park in assigned parking spaces. If we're having visitors, we make sure we leave a space for them, as there are only a couple of visitors' parking spaces for the whole office park, and they're always taken. So one day I get in early and park in the corner space, next to the wall. Lunchtime rolls around, and I have to run some errands, so I pick up some lunch while I'm out, with the intention of eating it in the office. I got back to work to find that someone from the office next door has taken my space while I'm out. I recognized the car straight away. It was one of their salesmen. He's a real a-hole, totally full of himself thinks the world revolves around him, etc. You know the type. It isn't the first time, or even the tenth time, that he's taken one of our spaces either. I don't want to have to drive right down the road and walk back, and I can see him standing outside the office next door, smoking and talking to someone. I shout, excuse me. He ignores me. I shout, excuse me again. Still nothing. I beat my car horn. That gets his attention. He turns around and I ask him if he can move his car. He says in a minute, points to his cigarette, which by the look of it he'd only just lit, and turns back to his conversation. I say excuse me again and get ignored again. I beat my car horn again. He turns to look at me. I point out that there's a sign parking and I need to get back to work. He shrugs, tells me he'll only be a minute and turns his back on me again. Obviously trying to reason with him isn't working and I wasn't going to sit around in the car park for another few minutes. He could have moved his car out of my space and parked behind the two spaces allocated to the office that he was visiting, but he'd rather inconvenience me. So I reversed my car right up to the wall, blocking him and one of my coworkers in. I got out of my car and he demanded that I get back in my car and wait as he'd only be another few minutes. I told him that I needed to get back to work and that he could knock on the door when he was ready and I'd come back out and move. 20 minutes later, glad I wasn't still in my car, there was a knock on the door. One of my coworkers answered it and came to tell me that I needed to move my car. Now usually I'd be straight out, but as this person was a repeat offender, had ignored me, turned his back on me when I was asking him to move his car and had talked down to me when I'd parked, I decided to make him wait. I told my coworker to tell him that I was on a call and that I'd be out in a minute. Half an hour later, I went out and moved my car to find him pacing backwards and forwards and complaining that he'd missed a meeting on the other side of the city. I told him that he should only park where he's allowed to park, as per the sign on the door to the office that he was visiting, that he'd been told several times before and that he could have moved his car when I'd asked him to earlier. He never parked in our spaces again. The second story is, I'm a manager at a valet company. Some a-hole constantly parks illegally in my lot. I manage the valet at a hotel. Our hotel is downtown and we own a large lot across the street. For a while, we've had an a-hole in a Ferrari that constantly parks in our lot illegally. I've left numerous notes on his windshield to stop parking there to no avail. I could have towed his car, but I wanted to confront him. When I wasn't too busy, he once again parked in the lot. I took my car and blocked him in. I also left a note on his windshield, see valet at hotel blank. I also started the stopwatch on my watch. 1.5 hours passed and I was running to grab a car when I noticed him standing next to his car on the phone. He said to me, move this car, I have to get out. I replied, I'll move it when I have a chance. His response was, I wouldn't talk to me that way, I'm a cop. 
I hopped into the car I was bringing to a guest and slowly meandered back to the Ferrari owner after I was done. My immediate response was, you're a cop, I'd like your badge number and I'd like to know where you're a police officer. He immediately denied that he ever said he was a cop, just that he had a lot of cop friends. I kindly informed him that cop or not, you simply cannot park illegally and I had given him numerous warnings. I let him know that I was busy, ran back to the hotel, did a lot of nothing for 10 minutes and headed back to him. He mentioned how I inconvenienced him and I retorted back, I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but you don't think you're inconveniencing me when I have a full lot and you illegally take my spot, making my job harder? I didn't know I couldn't park here. I pointed right above his car. You didn't see the huge sign saying no public parking, did you? I was only here for a few minutes. Sir, I started my stopwatch. You were here for over an hour and a half. Why are you giving me such a hard time? Why did you lie to me and say you're a police officer? After about 30 minutes of my leaving mid-conversation to check up on work, he finally apologized and I moved my car out of the way. A week later, I was pulling a different car out of the lot and he pulled in and flagged me down saying, they told me I can park over to the left. I said, who told you that? Your boss. Oh, that's interesting. I'm actually in charge of this lot and you can't park here. I'll happily tow your car the next time I see you here. Well, where can I park? I let him know the few spots that didn't belong to the hotel, but let him know that chances are he'll get towed. He drove off and I haven't seen him since. I would have loved to see their face when the car is towed, but it was in a remote lot. Chances are 50-50 of me being there when a tow goes down. This guaranteed that he had to see me. A few weeks ago though, I put a tag on a lady's car, saying not to park in our spot, and she would be towed the next time. The next day it was back, so I put another tag on her car. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. She moved her car from one spot of ours to another. I then called the tow company. When the huge tow man had showed up and put the racks around the tires, before lifting it, the lady ran out saying she would move the car. The tow guy looked at me, looked at her and said, that'll be $80, it's what my company charges for me to come out. The woman then said, I don't have $80. The tow guy looked at me, looked at her, looked back at me, smiled, hit the hydraulic button and said, then that'll be $300, see you at the impound lot. That was gold. The next story is, point out that I'm not working, will you? I work in an office with a pretty cool boss. If we have nothing to do, he's perfectly fine with us browsing the internet, so long as emails are answered when they come in, and the phones are not left to ring. There are only six of us in the office, less before Christmas, when this story takes place, due to people using the last of their leave. Anyways, I have to be a couple hours earlier than my workmates, on certain days, which means that when we are quiet, like before Christmas, I have normally completed all my work before they arrive. So there I am, minding my own business, Browsing the internet at about 9.30, when Mrs. Stick My Nose into Everyone's Business, aka Mrs. S, shouts, Oh, must be lovely doing some online Christmas shopping this early in the day. Throw away at me. I just turn around and tell her that I've done everything I can do. She smirks and gets back to her work. B? I sit there for the next hour or so, not a very happy bunny. It's not that she would have got me into trouble with the boss. He knows I work hard as my Christmas bonus proved. It was just the fact that she thought she might get me into trouble. So I plotted. My boss may be a cool guy about going on the internet, one thing he's not so cool about is people using the printer for personal reasons. I happen to know Mrs. S, likes to spend most of her afternoon browsing recipe websites, saving them onto Word and then printing off page after page. She of course stands by the printer she's doing this, so she can grab the small novel quickly before anyone else can. She's only slipped up once, when she must have pressed print the same time her phone rang. I was passing the printer, noticed the reams printing off and had a look at what they were. So I decide that I'll screw her over royally by diverting her prints to the printer in my boss's office. I waited for three days before I was in the office by myself at lunchtime so I could divert all her prints there. It was worth it. She must not have printed any recipes off for a while, so had a good few pages worth ready to go. She pressed print and practically ran to the printer as is her way. Nothing. Checks the paper. Yeah, no problem there. All the while I'm watching trying to suppress a giggle. As she's about to turn back to her desk, I imagine to double check she did press print, my boss walks out of his office. I would guesstimate about 15 to 20 pages of recipes in glorious color in his hand. He looks at Mrs. S. These are yours, I assume? She goes bright pink and he asks her into his office. I don't know what was said, but she didn't look happy when she went back to her desk. And the last story is, steal my things, I'll ruin your wedding. Prologue. The rental situation in this city is horrific, so I decided to save a little money by moving into a two-bedroom apartment with a friend of a friend. The situation begins to go south barely a month into our one-year lease with new roommate, let's call her Klepto, starting out by being just a little nuts and progressing into stealing my things. Clothes, money, cosmetics, even underwear. And I don't mean borrow without asking, I mean disappear into her clutches never to be seen again. Instead of taking the penalty for breaking my lease, I decide to wait out the rest of the year. I buy a lock for my bedroom door and move most of my things into my bedroom, except for sofa, TV, Blu-ray, etc., which stay in the living room. The Story 
The final days of our lease, we each begin to move out, when I come home from work and find Klepto's things gone, along with my TV, Blu-ray, and everything else that she had access to. Now, none of this was brand new stuff. Most of it was my parents' cast-offs or second-hand purchases, but there was no way I could afford to replace them. Also, I had no way to prove that these items were mine, second-hand. I knew it would be her word against mine, and when I called her demanding my things back, this is exactly how it played out. The Revenge This could have been the end of just another bad roommate story, but Klepto had left one last precious thing to move out, her wedding dress. Klepto was getting married in two months. It was too good an opportunity to pass up, and the dress went with me. It didn't take too long to get the first phone call. Over the next few days, I ignored at least 30 phone calls from her. I was prepared to just trade for my things back, but then I got a registered letter from a lawyer, demanding the return of the dress. I really didn't want to blow the issue up any further, so I got out her beautiful, delicate designer lace dress and prepared to return it. I stuffed it into the smallest box possible, about the size of a shoebox. I could hear fabric ripping as I crammed it in. But that's not it. I just so happened to have a friend that was headed to Europe and was very happy to put the dress in her suitcase. When she arrived, I had my friend send the dress cash on delivery. I can only imagine the look on Klepto's face, as she finally got her dress days before her wedding, and then not only had to pay for the delivery, but also needed to get it cleaned, pressed, and prepared for a big day. Thank you for watching. Bye!